Unlike any other car maker, Lotus doesn't ask what the customer might want, they ask what the customer can do without. And it seems we can do without quite a lot. In fact, there are only two luxuries in here. There's an electric window on the uh, driver's side and another one over there. And they're optional extras. You really do get a sense from this car that there is no waste at all, that it is basically a road-going go-car. Other than this ghastly badge here, which looks like it belongs on the notepaper of a Middle Eastern hotel chain, it has lights for when it goes dark, a roof for when it rains, and these semi-slick tyres for when it doesn't. Like now. <laughs> Remember, we tested uh, a Norman Siege a couple of years ago. It came down here to the track and it outmaneuvered a helicopter gunship. And this one is broadly the same on the handling front. God, it's good. Where it's not the same is under the bonnet because they fitted the 1.8-litre Toyota engine with a supercharger. So now it has some gut to go with the G. Top speed, 148 miles an hour. Got to 60, four seconds. It's the fastest accelerating car Lotus has ever made. It's the feel of the thing that impresses most of all. I'm in sixth gear now, 60 miles an hour, foot down, and you can feel this sort of invisible wave of torque pushing you along. It's like when you're swimming and you get caught in a current. Oh, where did that come from? And you don't drown. Oh, this really is one hell of a car. To see how much of a car, I've devised a little test. This is a Ford Mustang. It's made by one of the world's biggest car firms in Detroit, Michigan, Motor City. It's got a 4.6-litre, 300 brake horsepower V8 at the front, rear-wheel drive at the back, and a Stig in the middle. And he's lined up alongside a plastic car that was made by some Norfolk turnip farmers which is being driven by a fat bloke with a dicky hip. Right, stand by for a two-lap race of our short circuit. This is sushi versus a hamburger. result wasn't really surprising. Because stuff sold by the gram is always going to be more exciting than stuff sold by the pound. Saffron, for example, is more exciting than lard, or charcoal, or manure. As I see it, there are only three drawbacks to this car. It costs £33,000, which is quite a lot. It's pretty noisy when you go past 85, and unless you're as slim and as agile as it is, getting out can be quite, um, 
and dignified. Mostly, though, it's just a triumph of British engineering.